whether Hamas, Hezbollah, Iran, or United States of America care, the land belongs to the nation of Israel. Not only that, but Jerusalem belongs to the nation of Israel. God speaks of a time in the future that God is going to put his son Jesus Christ up on that holy hill. Hear the word of the Lord, Psalm 2. Why do the heathen rage and the people take counsel against the Lord and against his anointed? Psalm verse 6, 2, 6. Yet have I set my king upon the holy hill of Zion. Isaiah 62, 1. For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. Here's Zechariah 1, 17. Cry ye, cry yet, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, My cities throughout prosperity shall yet be spread abroad, and the Lord shall yet comfort Zion, and watch this, and shall yet choose Jerusalem. I'm leading to something. God said, I'm not finished with Jerusalem, Zechariah 2.12. And the Lord shall inherit Judah, his portion in the Holy Land. Notice he calls Israel the Holy Land. He shall choose Israel again, verse 12 says. God is saying, I am not finished with Israel. Let me make this emphatically clear for all of those that you're not some terrorist trying to drive them off, but your religion and denomination is trying to wipe them out. The church has not replaced Israel and Israel has not been replaced by the church. God will fulfill his promises to the nation of Israel and to the Jewish people. When the rapture takes place, the times of the Gentiles will be swallowed up and God will again turn his attention to the nation of Israel. He has not forgotten them. He will never forget them. Please don't think you can inherit Israel's blessing upon yourself. You're only here because you were grafted into the vine. Whenever the vine, that is that fig tree, starts blooming out as it's doing right now, I can assure you that God is watching and God is seeing and God is going to turn it in a moment and you'll watch the prosperity and the protection of Israel like you've never seen before. Zechariah 8 and 3 says, Thus saith the Lord, I will return unto Zion and I will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem and Jerusalem shall be called a city of peace. He's talking about the second coming of the Lord and the mountain of the Lord of hosts, that holy mountain. Hear me, church. The riots, the turmoil, the bloodshed is all because of the city of God, Jerusalem. So why is it so important for me as a Bible-believing Christian to support Israel and their claim to the land? Number one, Israel is the only nation created by a sovereign act of God. Israel belongs to God and God gave the title deed to the land of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and to their descendants forever, Genesis 15, 18 says. Ishmael, the father of the Arabs, was excluded from the title deed to the land, according to Genesis 17. The modern-day Palestinians have no biblical mandate to the land. Even the boundaries of the state of Israel are recorded in Scripture in the book of Numbers 34, in the book of Joshua chapter 11. The boundaries are further explained then in Ezekiel 47 and of all of chapter 48 in the book of Ezekiel. So when God established the nations of the world, he started with Israel. Secondly, Christianity was born from Jewish roots. Romans 15, 27 gives us that reference and Jesus said salvation is of the Jews in John 4 and 22. Consider the contributions, ladies and gentlemen, of the Jewish people to Christianity. The sacred text, the word of God, comes from the Jews. All the prophets, Jewish, All the patriarchs, Jewish. All the disciples, Jewish. It is not possible to say that you're a Christian without having love for the Jewish people. Don't lift your hands and shout to Jesus because Jesus himself was a Jew. I just want to let you know we serve the greatest Jew on the earth, ladies and gentlemen. He is Yeshua. He is Jesus Christ, and he loves us. Number three, Christians should support Israel because it brings a blessing from God. Psalm 122 and verse number six, blessings are tied to blessing Israel in the city of Jerusalem, the Bible says. Jesus went to Cornelius' house 
of Capernaum and healed his servant because Cornelius had supported the Jewish people and built a synagogue in Israel, according to Luke chapter seven, verse five. God selected Cornelius in the book of Acts 10 to be the first Gentile to receive the gospel. Three times in the book of Acts chapter number 10, a righteous Gentile expresses his love for a Jewish people and he's the first Gentile to receive the Holy Spirit outpouring upon him and his house. Why is it so important to support Israel? By personal experience of my first trip in 2018, I never realized just how hated Israel was even among Christian religious denominations until my first trip to Israel. Here's what the Bible said in Psalm 120. When I was for peace, they were for war. This war will affect many things, both there and here. You can get ready. If you think your gas prices have been high now, understand that Iran is the one that's pumping the oil. You're watching the gathering of the nations around Israel, it's happening right now. And I wanna make this clear for all of you. This current war is not the war of Gog and Magog, but it is preparing the way. Just like Ezekiel spoke in Ezekiel 38 and 39, there is a predicted war that is coming and it will be massive on the northern front, led by Russia, Iran, Turkey, Sudan, Libya, and other Arab states. Ezekiel prophesied this massive force would move towards Israel. You're watching the precursors of it right now. When Israel, listen, was dwelling in the land of unwalled villages and in a state of peace and security. This will not be a security due to the state of peace for them. It is a security due to the confidence in their own strength which is what I believe happened in the breach of the information that caused them to be lulled to sleep. The same thing that's happening in America where we truly don't believe even after 9-11 that we could be attacked by those that hate America. Rest assured, my dear friends, hate has no color, no ethnicity, no laws. It does not govern itself by anything. When you're looking at babies' hands being tied up and then be beheaded in front of their parents and then set on fire and charred to a crisp, I can tell you that is nothing more than pure evil from hell from the very spirit of Satan himself and the only thing for that to conquer is when good men and righteous people will be silent and I say for Israel's sake and for Jerusalem's sake we shall not be silent in this hour.